I think it's odd now that even though I didn't believe in God, here I was spending all this time practicing music, which was about Jesus. This is the music that God called me back to him. So it's um, very dear to my heart. To me, it's waiting for being with God. But in the waiting, it's, it's being there too. So it's not, um, it's not the absence, but it's just, it's, it's this peacefulness of who knows what's gonna happen next, but something good, I know it's good. <laughs> I was raised in a Christian family, but when I was in college, I started to doubt whether God existed, and I came to the conclusion there was no God. And during this time, I heard the music of Olivier Messiaen, specifically um, the piano solo, 20 Contemplations of the Infant Jesus, and it just hit me so strongly in my body that I, I knew that I had to play this music. So I started to learn it, and while I was practicing this music and researching it, I found that my life began to change. I started to live in a different way. I came to believe in God again. I ha had a very strong longing for God. And it was really through the music, uh, playing it, and little by little searching for what this meant, which for me was about being quiet and spending time in solitude. During this time, then, I had made a shift where I did switch and I started questioning my belief that there was no God. I just took one little doubt and kind of turned the other direction and, and I began to uh, believe that there's something higher than human beings. And I didn't call it God, but just something. And that led me on a different path. I spent about nine years going to silent retreats and not talking. And through those silent retreats, I came into contact with the Kamaldolese monks down in Big Sur. And when I went there for the first time, which is a very spectacular place, I met a person who was an oblate, and I had no idea what that was. And she explained it to me, and I knew right away that this was what I wanted to be because it allowed me to live the monastic charisms of being quiet and going toward a constant communion with God, but I would still be in the outside world where I could play the piano, which is very noisy. Being an oblate means that you have a, a practice every day. They don't dictate to us what, that we have to do certain things. So it's up to us to find our own rhythm. When I was an atheist, I was looking for God. I wouldn't have called it that, but um, I, I would have called it truth. I was looking for truth. But now I'm so grateful that I found this community. You're singing this beautiful hair. <laughs> and I'm just so regret not being at any of your concerts. Mm. Yeah. You hear me. Oh, when I look back at the time that I didn't believe in God, I, now I see that God was always there. God was calling to me. And all I needed to do at a certain point in my life was turn around and acknowledge him. So for me, being an oblate is really the perfect balance because I can spend time and be in silence and solitude, but I'm also out in the world where I can practice the piano, I perform, and that is also vital to me.